Hello, sixth graders. In this video, we're going to talk about addition, strictly addition. There's going to be a plus sign between the two numbers. It's going to have to wait until a little down the road to get to subtraction because we're going to have to define subtraction in a, in a new way. Now, in this video, when we're doing some addition, you're going to be subtracting in your mind. So we're not totally abandoning subtraction, but there's a plus sign between the two numbers, which is why I say that we're, we're strictly adding. We already know about the integers. This number line has the integers uh, labeled from negative 8 all the way up to positive 8. We talked about the concept of uh, absolute value and opposites and so on, and ordering um, integers, putting them in order, which is nothing more than left to right on the number line. Now we move on to addition. And when we were back together uh, a few weeks ago, I used playing cards to introduce addition. I'm going to review that, but what we're going to do is we're going to move on to a more sophisticated way of understanding addition. I'm going to be using these four integers. Uh, recall that we use the black playing cards to stand for positive numbers. So this is positive 5, or simply 5. If we say 5 without specifying the sign, it's positive 5. We have 2 or, or positive 2, and then the two red cards are negative, negative 5, and negative 2. And as happens every year, you all got these perfectly well. When I handed you two of these cards and explained uh, how it works, you got it. Right. We all know how to add the integers. We're going to add a little bit more sophistication to it today by using the number line, and we're going to move on from, from this tool of the uh, playing cards. But let me uh, each, I'm going to do four additions. I'm going to show how it was with the playing cards and then move on to the sophisticated way of looking at it. We'll start with this one. 5 plus 2, 2 plus 5, addition is commutative, so it doesn't matter what order we do it in. And of course, we know that this is 7. But here's how I want you to look at it. I want you to see the positive 5 as an arrow that begins at 0 and points toward the 5 and ends there. So this directed arrow, directed uh, length, Later on, you'll learn that that's called a vector, and vectors are part of both math and science. And the positive number 2, the number positive 2, will be like that. It'll have uh, its beginning point at 0 and its end point at 2. Here's how we're going to add always. We're going to take one of those vectors or one of those directed line segments, one of those arrowed line segments and we're going to lay them end to end beginning point next to end point now the arrows are the end points the points are the beginning points we're going to always put these vectors together beginning point to end point so i'll take this one and move it down here put its beginning point at the end point and then it would be like that okay so i imagine picking up the vector that represents 2, and I put it beginning point next to end point, and then the answer or the sum is the new end point on that entire construction. So there it is at 7. So we just show 5 plus 2 equals 7. And of course, if I had started with the 2 arrow and then put the 5 next to it, it would still go to 7. Um, those two lengths put together, either way, are going to be seven units long, and that goes along with addition being commutative. So that's how we understand 5 plus 2 equals 7. In my opinion, the next step along our journey is to consider the two red cards, the red 5, the red 2, the negative 5, and the negative 2. Let's add them because they add in a similar way to the two positives. The signs are the same. That's an important concept. Here they're both positive, here they're both negative. So what's different? Well, 
the vectors representing these numbers, first of all, I'm going to write them in red to go along, color, color coded, um, but they point to the left. We're going to think of negative 5 as a vector which begins at 0 and goes to the left by 5 units. Its endpoint is at negative 5. The negative 2 starts at 0 and its arrow ends up at negative 2. We're always going to add two vectors by putting a beginning point right on top of an end point. So we're going to take this negative 2 vector, move it down here so that its beginning point is there, and then its end point, of course, will be at negative 7. What we just demonstrated is negative 5 plus negative 2 equals negative 7. Once again, if we had started with the negative 2 vector and then put the negative 5 vector next to it, we would still get to negative 7. Notice how these two numbers add in a similar way to the two positives. The next addition we're going to consider is positive 5 and negative 2. So notice two markers. Got the two different colors. The signs here are different. One of the numbers is positive, one of the numbers is negative. Here's how the vectors will look. For positive 5, its vector is begins at 0 and goes to the right, ending up at 5. The negative 2 is a vector pointing to the left. It begins at 0. It, it goes to the left by 2 units. Its endpoint is at negative 2. Here's what is consistent about all the additions. We place one vector's beginning point at the other vector's end point. Um, if we want to show 5 plus negative 2, if we want to do it in that order, 5 plus negative 2, we'll take this negative 2 vector and move it so that its beginning point is here and it's going to extend two units to the left like it did here. It's the same vector just moved over and of course it ends up at 3. What we just showed was 5 plus negative 2 equals 3. Now, um, when we were dealing with the playing cards, one of the first things I told you was when they're both black, you count the black spots and get positive 7. When they're both negative, you count the red spots and get negative 7. But when you have one of each color, I taught you to think that these two reds are going to cancel two of the blacks, leaving three blacks. Well, you can see that cancellation in this overlapping here, where the red arrow overlaps with the black arrow. It sort of takes away two from the, from the five and leaves you at three. You see? So this is where I said before, um, even though we're adding, there is an aspect of subtraction involved when the signs are different. And of course, if you're wondering, well, is this just 5 minus 2 is 3? It is. And when we get to subtraction officially, we'll see that. But right now it's an addition because there's a plus sign between the two numbers. Do you have an idea what the last problem is, the fourth and final? It's this. And it's similar to the one right before it in that the signs are different. We have a red card and a black card. We have a negative number and a positive number. We're adding two numbers with different signs. Well, as far as using the playing cards, when I introduced that to you, I told you that black spots cancel red spots. These two black spots cancel two of the red spots leaving you with three red spots or negative three. So the answer to this addition is negative three. Let's see what it looks like in vectors. The negative five is a left pointing vector that's five units long. It begins at zero and it extends to negative five. These, these markers 
Um, sometimes I think their lifespan is negative five days. Anyway, I digress. Ooh. That one, this one might actually last another hour or so. There's negative five and positive two. Positive two is a vector that starts at zero, points to the right by two units. What is consistent in all of these is you take the beginning point of a vector and put it right on top of the end point of the other one. So we will take this one, take its end point, put it right here on top of the beginning point of the two and put it on top of the end point of the negative five. It extends back here by two units to the right, just like it did here. And of course, now the new end point of that vector is at negative three. What we just showed is negative five plus two equals negative three. Now notice something. When we did five plus negative two, it was three. When we do negative five plus two, it's negative three. Is that just a coincidence? Absolutely not. The two answers are opposites of each other, just as they were with the first two. When we add five and two to get seven, and then we add negative five and negative two to get negative seven, those answers are also opposites. This is addition, ladies and gentlemen, not difficult. Like anything in math, some practice may be required. Some of you may have it already, but others of you may require some practice, but learn the basics, learn the definition, how we understand these things, then be willing to put in the practice and everything will fall into place. Thank you for your attention and I'll be seeing you on YouTube. Bye-bye.